So here's a question. What did you want to be when you grew up? A CEO, a race car driver, perhaps even a professional skateboarder. Me, I always wanted to build something cool. Friends, allow me to introduce you to the U.S. Army F E D. So welcome, Grace. Hi. <laughs> and look at the great show and tell she brings. I mean, this is awesome. It's a great vehicle made in Detroit by the great engineers in the Tank and Automotive R&D Center, one of our uh, centers of excellence for all ground vehicles. And one of the centers of excellence is part of the uh, U.S. Army Material Command. It's coined as if you shoot it, drive it, fly it, communicate, or eat it, AMC provides it, and that's what we do for our soldiers every day. So what do we have here? So uh, one of the big losses from fuel efficiency on an M114 is it's old technology for the drivetrain. So that was one of our focuses, is right-sizing the engine and coming up and finding the engine that works for the application. So here we have a Cummins. It's a four and a half liter inline four cylinder. It's a 200 horsepower. It's turbocharged and supercharged. Wow, so, you don't screw around. No. Are so you, you a car girl? A little bit. A little I mean, bit. growing up in the Motor City, I think yeah. you kind of become one. Yeah. So what do you drive? I drive a minivan. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> so this right here is a, it's a monocoque hull structure. So really it's a one piece where the armor is all integrated together for strength. And if you start in the bottom, there's also a, there's a blast shield underneath the vehicle. Oh, it's like a V-shape down there. It does have a, a slight V, because something that we've learned over the last 10 years in combat is that really the, the things that help us for an IED blast is height off the ground, which is critical, as well as a V-shaped hole. So when the blast comes up, it goes off to the sides. And the goal was to have a 30% improvement over our uh, current up-armored Humvee. But you have a bit of a different problem. Like, a normal passenger car is anywhere from 2,500 to say 5,000 pounds. What is this way? Oh, you're talking 14, five, almost 15,000 pounds. But what do you, how do you do fuel efficiency when weight is the enemy of fuel efficiency? It was right about then that Mean Gene turns up and of course has an answer to that very question. Another interesting thing is the use of different materials. You got half inch steel plate for the doors, bulletproof glass, uh, aluminum here, and you got a carbon fiber hood. Behind the engine, we have an ISG, which is the integrated starter generator. So rather than an alternator, you have this starter generator that starts the engine, but also generates power for our export power. We have about 20 kilowatts of export power. Does it available. provide any assist like a mild hybrid? Yes, it's kind of like a mild hybrid. It's electromagnetic. Now, why the supercharger and the tur turbocharger? It's for that torque. Did you, how did you guys tune it? Is the turbocharger from low RPM and the supercharger picks up at high RPM? What, what, is it, what does it do? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, now, if you didn't drive a town and country, you'd know the answer to that. <laughs> and one of the things that we found whenever you have a blast, a lot of the soldiers' injuries are from the spines being crushed from the shockwave. So what these seats do is the soldier is strapped in then you're locked in in that seat. So as a blast comes up, the seat can actually move. Oh, with so it's that the blast. whole seat that picks up. Correct. Fuel economy. I wouldn't think a, an armor-plated Humvee gets very good fuel economy. Like, what, what does one today get? The current fleet probably between four and five miles per gallon. So not a you lot. Know, no, no. But this is getting so that this vehicle actually gets a 70% improvement. And it, depending, you know, we that's the other challenge we have is we have multiple mission profiles, because it's all about the mission. So I can't help but noticing you have a sunroof in this thing. Right, it's uh, not quite a sunroof, but this is called a second egress point. Something you'll see in uh, all military tactical vehicles is there has to be always two egress points for every vehicle. In other words, two ways to quickly get out of the vehicle. So obviously your primary is going to be your door, mm -hmm. but say this vehicle was on its side, or for some reason the door got jammed, and the soldier can't get out, this then would act as a second egress point. So it's your escape hatch. Right. Yeah. Right. Or you could put in like an ejector seat for somebody you don't want. <laughs> you gotta get that option in for In-laws, right? Yeah, yeah, I get that. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I know someone that would be perfect for that. <laughs> so these bags are pretty unique. Uh, they're not unique really out Unique is an there. understatement. Yes, they're huge, aren't they? Okay, so the cool thing about these air or coil over 
It's coil over. Coil over. Like hot rod kind of coil over. Yeah, it's the titanium coils. Titanium? Titanium. You know, I can definitely tell a woman designed this stuff. Yeah. You guys have a thing with precious yeah, metals. You do. And the more expensive, the better. <laughs> okay. Except for when I'm using taxpayer dollars. Thanks, but exactly. Always, but on Tony's taxes. dollars. On Tony's dollars. Tony's that Tony. <laughs> you got a big problem. So if these got shot at or anything, you could lose ride height. Yeah. But you'd still have your suspension. Okay, this technology stuff is all entirely fascinating. But when someone turns up on your doorstep with a 15,000 pound military concept prototype of some sort, you gotta drive it. Okay, yeah. Moto Man. Yes, sir, Munch. Let's go. Much waiting. Let's, let's see if you can put the, you know, pedal to the metal. You think I can drive this thing? I don't know, I'm hoping. I can't even I'm hoping. Seat belt on. You know, according to some of the tapes I've seen, you can, you can do your, you can do it just. Why? Well, thank you. Okay. I granted, next time, give me a car manual. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, you're a good Michigander. Here we go. God, this thing is huge. Got a nice feel, doesn't it? A you know, I gotta tell you, it's not as tight on the inside as I thought it would be. Yeah, actually, the the shape of the vehicle gives you a little bit more space. You know, the doors are uh, almost kind of encapsulate for protection for the soldier. Yeah, it's pretty nice. We've got good good visibility out of the side windows. I don't know about the visibility. You don't think so? No, I don't feel the visibility. I don't really see a lot attached to the accessory drive besides the supercharger. Yeah, all of our accessories are electrified. Oh, so this has got electric yeah. power steering mm -hmm. and everything. Yes, it does. Oh, a military vehicle. So that helps with our fuel efficiency. So what else besides the steering is electric? The, all the AC, your fans are all electrified. They come on as they're needed. So what this is, is a, it's a cooling vest. If you notice, inside the vehicle, there is uh, AC ducts for heating oh, and I tried cooling. It. it works quite yeah. well, yeah. especially <laughs> with the heat. Especially if you hit it. Correct. But the problem is, again, with this kind of a vehicle, I mean, you know when you, when you drive it, when you seal this vehicle, it's, it's almost airtight, and it can get very hot. And it's definitely in you know, the hot environments. So what these are, are against a cooling vest that you'd wear underneath your armor, and it has a quick disconnect. And on each seat, there's these uh, black cables here, and it all gets circulated through this box so it's here. it's literally air conditioning for your vest. So what it is, it's, it's cooling. So there's like a gel that mm -hmm. goes through these tubes. Yeah. And so what it does is it helps keep your core colder. Yeah. Which is really a, a huge improvement if you're in the vehicle for a long amount of time. So it, it's not this very, goes over your head. It's not very stylish, is it? Oh, this way. Oh, I've got it on wrong. <laughs> of course, I can't figure this out. That's why you went to West Point and I didn't. <laughs> OK. There you go. And then the arm goes through here. Right. It's just okay. a vest. Yeah. Right? And this oh, goes awesome. underneath your armor. Okay. And believe it or not, it makes a, a huge improvement. By just being able to keep the body cooler, it really helps. What do you think? It, it's it's perfect. It's got some surprisingly light steering. Handles the road pretty well. Relatively flat. I haven't taken it around a racetrack yet. Right. But we're not going to do that in El Sodondo? Yeah. You know, I think the uh, downtown area is going to be somewhat surprised to see this thing. You know, let's see if we can go 0 to 60. What is that? 20 seconds. Yeah. Or yeah. 29. 20, really? It's 29 yeah. seconds to 60? Yeah. Wow. And then what does yeah. this thing do here? That's our sensor for our ride height adjustment. So that's why we have that big bag there, so we can, we can change our ride heights. And what are the different ride heights? What are those specifically? It's, you know, it ranges from 8 inches off the ground to 16 inches off the ground. Good thing about the coil over is that if the airbag gets shot out, you still have that titanium coil. And then what's going on with the tires here? So the tires are low rolling resistance tires. How do you balance low rolling resistance with like the different terrains you don't expect? These tires have CTIS, which means central tire inflation. So we can actually inflate the tires from inside the vehicle as we go on-road or off-road. On-road you want more pressure, off-road you want less pressure. They also have run flats, that way if you, if you do have a problem, if you got, got shot at or if you just run over a really big screw, mm -hmm. really big one, <laughs> you have these run flats which will take you 10 miles away at 30 miles an hour. Take these uh, what I call nitrogen spheres, most people call them accumulators. They're for the brake system, and they allow high pressure to be put into the hydraulic system to apply more pressure to the brakes at the wheels. 
And the first time I saw them was on the old Silver Shadow Rolls Royces of the early 70s and late 60s. And in those days, we used to be able to take them apart mechanically and rebuild them. These are sealed and you have to remove them and replace them. And a lot of, lot of high-tech cars use these now. This display here is, is to uh, enhance driver or soldier awareness yeah. of your fuel economy. thing that everybody that knows that watches me do any of these shows knows the welding is one of my uh, particular points of interest and the welding throughout this vehicle is stunning uh, especially when you consider the application uh, there is a what appears to be a robot weld here that goes right across the top of the bulkhead and just goes straight across the vehicle from one side to the other and it's absolutely flawless uh, all the other welds, a lot of them appear to be hand welded, and again, they're flawless. And the welding, the flawless welding goes up all the way into the radiator. The radiator looks like it's a, a handmade radiator that's comparable to a Formula One or a NASCAR uh, competition radiator. It's just fantastic. And these massive hooks, these are aluminum and they're hand welded to this frame here. Uh, these are for picking the vehicle up and uh, airlifting it from one place to another. So how do you go from Wayne State University to the CTO of the U.S. Army Very Material? Very carefully. <laughs> so how do you get to be the lead engineer on a military vehicle? Um, probably luck. <laughs> 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 I, I grew up in Michigan. It's the Motor City. Everyone knows that. It's Motor City, so I grew up around vehicles, and everyone became engineers. I, however, became a scientist. I was over in uh, the third ID for Operation Iraqi Freedom during the initial ground combat phase. So I, I've led uh, soldiers in combat, I've had soldiers die in combat, and because of that, that's really why I kind of want to change my, my future path in the military, because I was combat arms. And I went into the Army Acquisition Corps. It's, it's a partnership with the AMC, with the scientists, the engineers, etc. What are you doing in the Army? Are you in the Army? Are you enlisted? Are you uh, a sergeant or are you a civilian? No, I'm just a, a civilian. Uh, so out of our organization, there's, uh, again, there's 70,000 within AMC, mm -hmm. and many of them are, are civilians like myself who come to work every day um, doing our technical jobs, all the way from technical jobs to mechanics, artesian uh, people that do uh, work in our factories and mm -hmm. in some of our depot systems. but. Just normal people, just doing a normal job. The difference is our job means a lot, and it means a lot to... It's a hell of a uh, mission. Yeah, it's hell of a it, yeah. Probably shouldn't say that, but yeah, it's a hell of a mission. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got an engineer, a chemist, and a soldier that got together and built a 15,000-pound hot rod. Sadly, we know what the chemist drives. But what about the other two? Are they car guys and gals? Not Tudor the, uh, Wrangler, and you drive a manual. Right. Respect. I know. <laughs> Soccer uh, moms for the four doors. Can't do <laughs> Actually, you, they have a whole funny story about the, 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 they, they started making that because they felt that uh, people felt that two doors were more two GI Joe. So I you're know. kind of proving the I point. Know. There you go. Sorry. That you are literally well, GI <laughs> Humphrey. Well, I have a 911 Carrera. Wow. It's pretty nice. Little, little. Oh, and you little. shift your own gears. I do. All right. Like that. I've wanted a minivan since I was 16. What the hell is wrong with I you? I had a lot of friends. 16? <laughs> you can fit more people in it. Why? Because you can load up really fast, get out of there if you need to. Your parents are on your back. <laughs> what do you live in a military <laughs> zone at home with your parents? Is that why you're now developing? <laughs> no. I think this is more a psychology <laughs> channel than it, than it is watching things about cars. I mean, most military vehicles, you, you actually have a driver and then you have the commander who sits here. See, I'm the commander. Oh, <laughs> is that how it is? That's how it works. <laughs> okay. I say make a left, we go left. I mean, you're looking at a, you know, within the military, we have a fleet of 
probably of like vehicles, almost 160, 200,000 vehicles. So if we're going to upgrade and we're going to do the kind of things we'd like to be able to do on them, they have to be affordable. So, so we had affordability targets as part of this project too, and that's why some of the selections were made. So from four MPG on a current vehicle mm -hmm. to what is this, 15 you said? It gets, it depends on the mission again, it gets between 7 and 12, 7 and 13, something Over 100,000 some odd yeah. vehicles, that's right. a huge yeah. savings. it's a huge savings. It's a huge savings. That's really the context. Yeah, yeah, well, fuel, you know, between um, water and fuel is 70% of what's moved in a convoy. So just think about this, 70% of a convoy is moving either water for drinking and all those purposes are fuel. So is this standard equipment? Well, first of all, this is a lot more cooler than having a couple. Much cooler. We'll be honest. Yeah. But there is a practical Same reason for this. Plan. And the main reason is we've also uh, realized if we have an IED event. Yeah. If anything is not properly secured in this vehicle, if there's an explosion, this weapon could go flying into the vehicle and injure a soldier. Yeah. So what we want to do is we use these mounts so that way while you're in the vehicle, Everything is secure and locked down. But if you need to exit the vehicle quickly, just like you demonstrated, you pop the button and then you got the weapon, you leave. Dude, you live the life. <laughs> West Point, you've been all over the world. You play with weapons. Yeah, you, you, you keep our country safe. Thank you for everything you do for us. Appreciate it. Really appreciate it. Thank you. you do. Now I'm going to keep this. <laughs> you have to sign for it. <laughs> so if you couldn't tell, we had a lot of fun with the folks in the U.S. Army Material Command. So I can't in good conscience close this film without sharing some of our favorite parts. It's a great organization. It's, uh, we're headquarters in Alabama, but uh, like, <laughs> we gotta, hey. <laughs> <laughs> She's a big star now. She just worked with Jay Leno last night. <laughs> hey, he did takes. When I think of New Jersey, and I'm a New Yorker. I know. I'm sorry. I don't think of you. I'm sorry. <laughs> and I said, thank you. <laughs> so you're really from Jersey? I am. Yeah. Well, well what exit? Four. See, and I, I'm kind of surprised. I would expect you to, like, have a hairy chest with a gold chains, maybe Italian. a leather jacket. <laughs> get some, like, uh, some gabagool for dinner. Some uh, yeah, pizza what? steaks. Or, uh, oh, cheese steak steaks. pizza. Oh, that's... Yeah. There you go. My steak pizza in my life came from an Italian woman from Long Island, so... Okay. We do it well. Pizza on, pie, pizza. not a pizza. Oh yes, it is a pizza right, pie. Right. Yeah, yeah, definitely pizza bagels, pie. Bagels, real bagels. Eh, we're New Yorkers. We do our bagels. You can have your bagels, Mr. Bajoisi. So, so look at the camera and say thank you, Ralph Shield. Thank Shiel. you. Who? Ralph Shield. Ralph Shield. He, he designed it. Oh well, thank you. Ralph. I have some updates that you can make, but I'll get back to you. <laughs> Same. Oil pressure. You don't have to, did you turn it all the way? I turned it all the way. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's, that's all the way. That's the smell. That's all the way. <laughs> <laughs> that's a little bit. So there's a really interesting behind the scenes with the FED. The night before we did the shoot, I had the very good fortune of having dinner with General Vi. He is the four-star general that runs the U.S. Army Materiel Command. And while it's very cool to have dinner with a four-star general, what was even more interesting was the people that were holding the dinner. The Association of the United States Army. These are the people that raise money and educate returning war heroes that are getting back into the workforce. They raise money for wounded vets. They also raise money for the Fisher House. These are the people that house families of wounded vets and combat heroes that are in hospital. Now, I'm that person that loves to say thank you when I see an active military personnel walking through the airport. But I have to say, the Association of the United States Army is a great way to do just that.